The first sign of being born again is you get perfect peace. That's the first sign. Jesus said, I came to bring you peace. And you really do get perfect peace within. Perfect peace when you're born again. And the second sign is that you deal with the world in a different manner. It cannot harm you anymore. You're in it and not of it. And then as a result of that, all that, those things come. Long suffering, endurance, you, all those things are just, it become a natural way of living because you now have a new nature in Christ. And anybody who tells you that after you are born again of God, that you can sin is a liar and the truth is not in them. They are lying. They are absolutely lying to you. And so, and, and so many preachers are telling these people that. So when they don't have perfect peace and they don't have patience and they don't have this, they, they, they excuse it away by saying, well, I'm not perfect. I'll be perfect when I go to heaven. God doesn't say, wait until you get to heaven and I'll make you perfect. Or I will give you perfect peace. You can have it right here if you're born again. It's within us. But they've been lied to about they can have it later. So they walk out of the church, make babies out of wedlock, hate the white man. The men and women hate one another. And they say, oh, I'm not perfect. The devil has played a trick on the folks, an absolute trick. He said that he was going to deceive every man, woman, and child. And if you look in your own personal life, you will see that he's deceiving you. It doesn't have, you don't have to look at Detroit. It's anybody that's sinning, you're not, happy, you're not a happy person. And when I say sinning, I mean simple things, real things like resentment, like anger. I don't mean going out having sex with everybody and the mama, or smoking dope, or cussing out your neighbor. I mean that if you resent, yourself or anyone else, you are a sinner. And you're of your father, the devil. And your consequences are going, to be, are going to be negative. Life is tough. You're motivated by the world around you. You can't hold on to a job. You, you waste your money. Your kids are out of control. Can't find anybody to love. And nobody loves you. And you don't love nobody. All that stuff will be happening. You have fear. Yeah, your pathway is rough. You can't see clearly. If you have any resentment at all in your heart, that, that's the greatest sin right there. Is to, as a matter of fact, when you have that type of resentment in your heart, heart, you grieve the Holy Spirit. So you don't even have a teacher working within you. Isn't that something? Now you got to look outside to learn. You got to study the scriptures. You got to go to school. You got to do all this to try to learn because the Holy Spirit can't even teach you because you're grieving it by hating, by having a tad bit of anger in your heart. You must be born again. You must be born again. Yes, ma'am. I guess for me, when we're born again, we are born again, but throughout our day, things happen and we're challenged and we're going to fall. And then we are to repent, ask God to forgive us and move on. So I'm a little confused by the plague and all of that because <laughs> I'm in Christ. Um, you can't take that away just because I fail, I fail to do something or I fell short, but I know I fell short, so I'm working on it or I'm, I'm asking for forgiveness. So I'm, I'm a little confused right. on that. Well, children of God don't fall. Well, if I get angry at someone and I realize that something still needs to be worked out, of, uh, it still needs to be healed or de dealt with or right. whatever. Yes. Um, for instance, I'll say my father, for instance, who left when I was a little girl, who's back, who's dealing with cancer, when he goes off on me now, I tend to, I forgive him and I'm there for him, but I tend to get a little upset with him when he treats me that way. And why? Because I don't, why? Because, because it's abuse to me. It's abuse. You've abused me all my life. Now you want to abuse me again. So that's how I look at it. Oh, okay. So am I going to let you abuse me some more? No, I'm not. I'm going to take a stance. It says be angry and sin not. Right. So if I'm not going to sin, I'm still going to help him and do what I need to do. doesn't mean it doesn't hurt me. doesn't mean I don't cry. doesn't mean any of that. So how am I, how am I missing the mark that day? Good question. Million dollar question. You're on your way to salvation, but you've not arrived. Okay, so I'm not saved. No. Okay. And, and the reason I say that without a doubt, not to put you down, but to make you think. When you're born again of God, you have a new nature. 
you don't have any resentment at all in your heart toward your father or anyone else. And so, and, and God put an invisible spiritual bubble around you so that your father, your earthly father, or your mother, or anyone else can never get to you. And the only way that your father can still affect you inwardly is because you still resent him. Mm -hmm. Now, you may have gone down and accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior because you believed the story about him, but that did not cause you to be born again. Because God is a perfect love, and, and our enemy is of anger and, and resentment, hatred, which is all the same, which is of the devil. And so, until you truly forgive your earthly father, uh, God will forgive you and cause you to be born again. And I guarantee you, your father can never do anything to make you upset again. He could never get to you. So you have not been born again. Now, I'm sure you want to, and I'm sure you, you know, you're on your way to it, it sounds like, but you have not arrived. And what I would recommend is that you have an honest dialogue with your father, your earthly dad, and realize that he couldn't help himself and forgive him. It was wrong for him not to be there for you. Is he able to communicate with you? Yeah, he's able to communicate, but if he's not in his right mind, that's not going to help. That's what I'm asking. Is he, he, does he have something wrong with him mentally? No. So he you could sit. Not to, he just chooses not to acknowledge. He just chooses not to acknowledge. Here's what I would do if you can. I would sit down with him and ask him why did he leave. He, didn't, you know, he said he didn't leave. Well, listen to him. Listen, hear him out. Because there are always two sides to every story. And not all the time, but most of the time, mothers lie about fathers. They'll say, oh, your dad was so mean. He abused me. He left you. He didn't love you. He didn't send a check. But they never say, you know what? I ran your father off. I, I was Im impatient with your dad. I turned you against your father. They never admit that. So you grow up feeling like your father was all bad. Now, yes, you were weak for giving into that and leaving. But you need to hear both sides of the story so that your heart can change toward him because unless that happens, you're never going to know God. You cannot be born of your spiritual father until you learn to love your earthly father. Because how can you love a God you've never seen and hate your father? Mm -hmm. And your reaction to him is not just regular anger. It is an anger with resentment, which is of your father, the devil. That make sense? Makes sense, but you know, I don't agree with you. But that's okay. No, 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 it's okay not to. Yeah. If you, and, and what aspect of that you don't agree with? Um, my mother never talked bad about my father, and my father chooses, it says, be angry and sin not. But what does that mean to you? It to means be? it's okay to be angry as long as you don't retaliate and be mean and hurtful. I may, it may not last forever. I may be upset with him for a day or whatever until I can, until God deals with me with it and I deal with myself with it. But, you know, I, I, I'm. He, there's two sides to every story, but we make excuses for people who do things like that. My dad chose not to be who he, he chose to be a sinner. That's what he chose to be, and that's what sinners do. He did not choose to be a sinner. Well, that's what he's doing. Did you choose to be a sinner? I choose to be a sinner if I continue to walk. No, I said, did you choose Christ. to be one? You were a sinner before you were quote unquote saved, right? He chooses not to change, let's just say that. He chooses not to be born again. He chooses. But well, how do you know he chose that? Because of his walk, because of the things that he does. But how do you know he chose that? How do you know he decided one day? You know, in the church. He, how do you? He but you don't know. See, you haven't sat to have a have a real love him. talk with him to I see have. where he's coming from. Let me go back to the sin thing. You said being angry not sin. Your sin is that you feel something inside when you're angry at your father, and that is resentment. That's judgment. That's playing God, and that's the sin that you're committing. So you're not being angry without sinning. You're being angry and sinning. But if you didn't have that resentment for him, you would be able to disagree with him and, and, and deal with him, but not feel anything inwardly about it. You wouldn't feel any anger on the inside. And that's the sin. Do you stay around for abuse? You think a woman should stay with a man who's beating her and abusing her? Is so he, should I stay with my father when he's going to verbally abuse me and that's okay? Are you, are you helping him out by choice or force? Well, he's sick, so I'm helping because he's my father, and to me that's the right thing to do if that's what God would have me to do. Do you want to do it? Sometimes and sometimes I don't. <laughs> <laughs> God would not have you do it if you don't want to do it. Okay. And you're not obligated to do that. Okay. Uh, if your father had been a good man 
and you had that love for him, it would be something natural that you would want to do. But because it sounded like he wasn't a good man and you had this resentment for him, you, you may be doing it out of guilt. And even if you're helping him out, isn't that right? Oh, well, no, he, was, he was a father. I loved him. He left. So when he, when he left, that's when I thought he was a good father right. until he left. But then if you're helping him out of guilt, then that's not love anyway. Well, I would help, you know, the Bible tells us to help anyone who's in need. But not out of guilt. No, not out of guilt. He's a human being. I don't, I wouldn't, I, like, I don't want to see him suffer. I don't want to see him in pain. I love him. So do you love him more than God love him? No, God loves him more. Well, God will let him end up on Skid Row in an old folk home and die if he doesn't repent. Right. Well, he, he doesn't feel any guilt about it. And if you're a daughter of God, why do you feel guilty? Good question. Yeah, because that resentment is there. You haven't forgiven him, and so you, your anger is sin. Okay. It's not. It's not uh, an anger of love. It's an anger of hatred. Okay, I can agree with that. Yeah. That doesn't mean I'm not born again. I but, can agree with that. I can agree with that sin. I can right. agree with that, and that's something I need to 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 go to God about. But that doesn't mean I'm not saved. Um, is the nature of God? of anger and, and resentment? No, Is that not. his nature? No. And you've been born again, right? It's the fruit of the Spirit tells us what... what right. What, right. And you've been born again, yes, right? Yes, I'm born again. Meaning that you have his nature. I do have his nature. So then why do you still have the nature of the devil? Because I'm human and you still... there's a, The battle does go on. And so you can have two natures inside of you? No, I can't have two natures. But you got two. Of According to you, I'm, you have two. I'm, I'm not just spiritual. I'm a human being. I have tears, I have anger, I have joy, I have, I have all those things. I'm a human being, I'm a person. But I, that's, that's, that's who I am. That's what God made me, created me to be. Then I understand what you're saying. But God doesn't want you to have anger. No, of course he doesn't. He doesn't want me because it's not good for me. It, it, right, it, but it, when it, you are born again, you will have perfect peace. And you right. will always have joy and never the sad stuff that you're talking about. Okay, so when I lose my mother or my children, I'm not going to have any sadness. Yeah, there's I'm not going to hurt. I'm not going to be a little angry that I lost my child. I mean, it doesn't make sense to me. I understand that. I totally understand. And you're such a nice lady. <laughs> I really I'm, want you. Um, I'm just trying to understand. There, yeah, no, I love it. You, there is a time for mourning and a time for all that other stuff, but it doesn't affect your spirit. If you lose your mother. I'm still going to love God. But you don't love God right now. I don't. You want to. Okay. Because how can you love God and hate your father? I don't hate my father. You resent your father? I'm hurt. I don't hate him. Right, but that's coming from resentment. Okay. Is resentment a little better than hate? <laughs> <laughs> just try to work through it. That's all. No, no, no. And, and, I, I, and I know you want to, too, and I'm trying to just show you. Okay. Is resentment different than hatred? No. But so you have a little resentment, but no hatred. I hate what he did. Right. I love him. I hate what he did, but I love him. Right. But who, what gives you to... Now, I understand why you did it as a child. Mm -hmm. Your father walk away and leave you open. Mm -hmm. But as an adult, what gives you the right to hate what he did? Who are you to judge? Well, because the sins upon the children and the curse and all that goes on, and I had some effects from that. That's, That's right. right. So why don't you forgive him now so that that hatred will not be there, well, even for what did. he did? I thought I, I, I'm trying. I guess I don't know how. There you go. I'm, I'm pulling you in. <laughs> wow. I'm loving this. I'm totally loving it. And, and this, is, this is what I live for. I don't know how. Have you ever done anything and you said to yourself, wow, oh, I can't believe I did that. Oh, I'm yeah. never going to do that again. Yeah. And then for a while, you don't do it again. Yeah. And then you find yourself doing it again. Right. And then you think, how in the world did I do this again? I can't believe it. You have done that? Yeah, a wretched man that I am in Romans. But you have done it? Yes. <laughs> and have you ever wondered why you keep doing it? Uh, because I allowed myself to, to, to do it. No. I was drawn away, and I allowed it in. Was it like Sin. something else was driving you to do it? The no. thing that you didn't want to do? I don't know. Yeah. You need to start paying attention to yourself. Something else is making you do the things you don't want to do. Because you know that this is hurting you or hurting somebody else. Mm -hmm. And God forbid if you should have children, you're going to destroy their lives by being impatient, being mean. And you don't want to be that way to them. You think, these are my kids. Why am I doing this? 
I'm a Christian, I'm walking in the Lord, but yet I'm impatient with my children. I'm never going to do that again. I'm sorry, kids. And then you end up doing it again, right? It's like something else is making you do it. Okay. And it's not of God. Right. And so, it's not of you. I'm supposed to the devil. It, it's sin that's made a home in you. Okay. And your father had that same thing inside of him. Uh -huh. And when he walked out on you, he couldn't help himself. He, he loved you. He wanted to be there, but he couldn't help himself. Mm -hmm. And so if you can un understand yourself and that this thing is driving you to do what you do to your family members, I don't know if you have kids, it will help you to understand your father and that's what would cause you to forgive him because you realize, well, if I, if I can't help myself, my father probably couldn't help himself. How could I judge him? Yes, it was wrong, but I'm wrong too. So I wouldn't want my kids to hate me for doing things I really just don't want to do. Why would I hate my father? That's what will cause you to forgive him by understanding yourself. God said, know thyself. Remember Paul said, the things I want to do, I can't. Mm -hmm. and, then, and this thing is driving you. You need to be born again. A spirit has made a home inside of you. Okay. And until you for, forgive your father, unless you forgive your father, you're never going to overcome it. Okay. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. Does it help as to how to forgive? It does. In, in what way? What, what do you realize from that? That when I put it back on me, I'm not perfect either, and I and I have sinned, and so therefore I don't want I don't want God to hold what I've done against me, and I don't want my kids to hold what I've done That's right. against them. Because against you, me. if you could have done better, you would have done better, right. Or differently, right? Right. Well, your father feel the same way. <coughs> you have to talk to him. I don't think he does. <laughs> <laughs> but. <laughs> When my kids come to me and they talk to me, I, I talk to them and I and I and I acknowledge that I've hurt them and I've done things. I mean, my if you talk to any of my family members, my dad, you cannot get nothing through to him. He just thinks he he doesn't care what he did. Well, here's the beauty: God is so good. He has a set up that when you forgive your father, God will forgive you. Right. Your father don't have to admit that he's wrong. Mm -hmm. You just need to forgive him. Mm -hmm. And then God will forgive you and set you free. Mm -hmm. He will take that spirit away from you and give you perfect peace. And then you can live your life and deal with your father accordingly. So your father can stay as he is. He can act crazy, whatever he's doing. Mm -hmm. But you forgive him. Okay. You let it go and then God will forgive you. He doesn't have to apologize. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have to change. He doesn't have to say that he's sorry. He can make up excuses until the cows come home. But if you forgive your father, mm -hmm. God will forgive you. Do I still have to take the abuse? Well, in that, once you're born again, mm -hmm. you also see what to do. Okay. You don't have to plan it. Mm -hmm. You will also, because what's going to happen, one thing that's going to happen, I see your hand, boy, put your hand down. <laughs> you about to make me become her father. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm joking. Um, what's going to happen is, once you are truly born again, then you're going to have perfect love. And in that perfect love, you're going to deal with your father differently. You're going to see how to deal with him then. And that's why you got to come into this love so you can operate from within instead of from without. So you don't have to play and wonder, well, I'm not going to let him abuse me with some, you know, don't worry about that. You're going to have great compassion for your father that is overwhelming. And it has nothing to do with your nature of you, but it's the nature of God inside of you. I'm telling you, it's going to change your whole life. But you got to forgive him so God can forgive you. Okay. That makes sense? That makes sense. Do you disagree with any aspect of that? No, not really. I don't. Yeah. Well, that's how you find it. You got to re realize he couldn't help himself. Something happened to your father. If what you're saying is true because he's not here to speak for himself, but something along the way happened to him that he has just held on to and it just... It's locked away inside of him. He either cannot face it or maybe doesn't realize or know how to face it. Mm -hmm. But something has happened to him. I, and I understand that. That part I understand and I, and I know that he must be in pain and yes. I understand that. And to me, I forgive that. It's not, it's when I keep being abused that it gets me. It's right. when I've shown compassion and you're lashing out at me. But you've never shown any. Oh, your love has been false love. It's been guilt love. Okay. But once you're born again, then you'll show true compassion. Okay. And it would be all about him and not about you anymore. Okay. It really would not be about you. It would be you giving him love mm -hmm. and not even needing his love. 
because your spiritual father has fulfilled you with love. Okay. So you won't need his love, and that way he can never offend you. Okay. Because you don't need anything from him. Right now you need his love because you resent him. Okay. And he doesn't have, it's all as though he doesn't have it to give. But once you're born again, you'll give it to him. Mm -hmm. That makes sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah. So I want you to think about that. And I, I uh, I'm sorry? I will. Yeah. Um, and also take the first opportunity you get to have a sit down talk with him. And this time to just say, Dad, tell me about your life. What went on? You know, how are you doing? And let him say what he needs to say, act in any kind of way he wants to act, and just let him go through it. But you be patient with him. And he, he, may, he may overcome it because he may not have had anyone to show him perfect love. Everybody's been judging him. You know, they've been mad at him. They've been talking about him behind his back. So he has not had anyone to come and just be perfect love with him. Mm -hmm. Let him really get it off his chest. Even if he's wrong, let him get it off his chest. Mm -hmm. That makes sense? Yeah, yeah, it does. Will you let me know how it goes? I will. Yeah. I will. I'm, I'm glad you challenged me on that. That's what we are here for. Thank <laughs> you.